bit of good cross finding it. And another body! A brilliant one by Hill! On the 15th of May 1991 at the Feyenoord Stadium Rotterdam, on probably the greatest night of his football career, Mark Hughes' two goals helped defeat Barcelona in the Euro... ...the match that um, I would be looking for revenge and I think the press uh, got onto that angle uh, that I would be looking for revenge against Barcelona. That wasn't really a case, uh, the only thing I wanted to do was to show Barcelona I was a better player than I was able to show them in my time there and uh, I think... Uh, after the game was over, I think that's what I But certainly, Mark Hughes has little to prove to those who have watched him and played against him in the English First Division. Mark Hughes gives you value for money. He is available for selection every Saturday, and his courage and his, his, his willingness to play with injuries and pain makes him one of the most outstanding players of hard. Mark Hughes says thank you very much to Manchester United. Well, I'm sure most in halves will testify that um, Max one of the most physical and, and half centre forwards to play against. He, um, everybody knows about him, he will take the knocks, um, but also dish him out. Um, he's an aggressive type of character on the pitch, whereas off the pitch he's, he's quite quiet, you know, he he's never really says very much, but when he gets out on the park, um, he's a man possessed, he's, he's determined to win the ball, he's determined to score goals. and. Uh, I think everybody will say they don't look forward to playing against me. Mark is uh, probably now, I think last season, he's developed his all-rounder. Uh, he's probably the most developed all-round centre-forward in the first division at present. So he holds the ball up well, he scores goals, uh, he brings other t people into play and he works hard. And uh, there's not many of them around. Well, you've got to put him up with uh, like Johnny Taylor and uh, Dennis Lahr. You know, Bobby Charlton up there, all the great strikers, you know, you know Stuart Pearson's and whatever. And Mark's right up there with that, all of them. Um, I mean, he's a credit to the club and he's a great ambassador. Well, I mean, you know, you'd look at it as if to say, well, you, you know, I judge strikers by looking at him and saying, well, would I like to play against him week in and week out? Certainly with Mark, but I wouldn't like to do that. I mean, he's, even if he's having an off day, he's the one who's going to give 100%. He's, you know, you're going to get a few big bruises on you. And, um, He's, I would, in terms of, of rate, he must be up amongst the top half dozen in Europe. Not even Forrest don't even touch the ball until it's in the back of the net. Once again, a great run by Gordon Strachan at the heart of it. Outside him is Mark Hughes. Yeah, great he's, he's very strong. He holds bigger lads off, than, bigger lads than himself off, and uh, he's, he's got great control on the ball. And he always comes out with uh, some Good special work, goals. Turned by Mark Hughes, 1-1, one, one, back to Old Trafford. But things haven't always been easy for Mark. From a relatively late entry into the United first team, his drinking leading to loss of form and fitness, 
to his unsuccessful time at Barcelona after a much publicised £2 million transfer. But let's go back to the beginning of the Mark Hughes story, precisely to the 1st of November 1963. He was born in Wrexham, in the hospital, and um, we were living at a place called Fly at the time. And um, we stayed there till Mark was about four, and then we came to Robin. My father used to play football locally, and Mark's father locally used to play football. In a very amateur way, but he used to play, and we all used to go watch him. Well, Mark first got interested in football when he was about seven, I think. He was always kicking a ball, and I think at seven he joined the school team, and that's when he really started to take off, really. He was always kicking a ball, and I thought, well, it didn't have to be a ball, he would kick anything. <laughs> Well, I think I first got interested in, in uh, football locally. Uh, I think like most uh, young lads at uh, the age of about five or six, I think um, you, you, you play in, on your school field, on your schoolyard, and uh, you just uh, get a feeling for the ball. I think uh, from the ages of six to about 16, I was never without a ball in my hands, I think. So uh, it was um, just... Uh, from that early stages, I just carried on and started playing representative football. Then. I met Mark when I would have been about four or five in infant school. Obviously, Mark's 12 months older than me, but we've always been like close in that respect. That we've always played together. Uh, started from when we were little, fighting together, I suppose, and then as we got older, we got interested in football and then played football. He was the goalkeeper in school because uh, he was the only one who would dive on the concrete. Yeah. <laughs> he used to say to the lads, show sure, no, you dive on the concrete, Mark, and then he would dive on the concrete. From Ruaben Council School, Mark moved on to the village secondary school, where he was chosen to play for Wrexham District School Boys. From the early days, uh, um, I didn't really uh, think that I would ever be a professional footballer, but um, uh, when I got to about the ages of 13, uh, 14 and I was playing for Wrexham District School Boys then and, uh, and uh, there was a few club scouts uh, watching me then and uh, they, they showed a little bit of interest so fr from that stage um, I realised possibly I, I might have a chance but uh, when you're that young you don't really think that it'll ever happen to you. One or two of the lads got picked up um, like myself and uh, Phil Williams and, uh, and I think towards the, when we left school I think uh, there was about four or five players who went to clubs. Um, obviously, uh, they were a little bit older than me, so if, uh, Phil went to, to Arsenal uh, the year, year before me, and then I went the year after. Um, Phil uh, is a different character to me uh, completely. Um, he's, he was a tricky left winger, and he was, he's like a bottle of pop and uh, on and off the pitch. But I think... Uh, he had problems settling in London because even more so than me settling in Manchester. The press have never actually been able to appreciate that the lad is a manager's dream. If you've got one player that you want to put on your side, that's going to do 90 minutes worth of work, that's what Sparky is. He's not always spectacular, although he does score the spectacular goals. Most of his work is just basically wearing defenders down. He's a physical... He's not the biggest lad if you were if you were next to him having a pint. He's about five foot eleven, five foot five foot ten. He wouldn't frighten you in a pub. But if you put a red shirt on him, he'd certainly frighten you. I was spotted by Manchester United by, um, by a man called Hugh Roberts and uh, he came to uh, watch uh, Wrexham District School Boys and uh, and he, he uh, sent Christmas cards to me um, and everything and just made them the initial approach really. Because he was the first and I always had a feeling towards him and I just met. First saw Mark when he was 12. He was playing in a county game for Wrexham under 13s and he was playing against Flintshire under 13s at Flint. And as I recall it was a really frosty morning and bitterly cold and you stood on the line and you're watching all these 13 year olds and then suddenly I noticed the striker for Wrexham and he was shielding the ball he was 
laying off the ball, doing all the things a professional would do. Now, watching Mark then is just the same as watching Mark now. After signing for United, there were yet more football honours in store for Mark. From there I was able to progress, I played for North Wales schools and then uh, I went for a couple of trials for the Welsh school boys. Um, my first year, uh, because I was a year younger I didn't get in, but uh, my second year, uh, when I was in the fourth year, I was able to get in and, uh, and I made the Welsh team and uh, I was quite lucky really because that year um, there was a lot of schoolboy games and uh, and I was fortunate enough to play against England schoolboys at Wembley, which for a 14, 15 year old was a great thrill. I scored in that game actually, yeah. uh, but uh, unfortunately there was a referee from Bristol, I never forget him, and, uh, and he decided in his wisdom that he was going to disallow a 15 year old boy's uh, only ever goal that he was going to score at that stage at Wembley. He was throwing from the left and um, somebody flicked it onto the edge of the box, somebody laid it back and it, it bounced once actually, uh, about knee height and uh, I volleyed it straight into the top of the, top of the net and uh, I didn't realise for about 10 minutes after that I was disallowed because they couldn't catch me, see, I was running out of the stadium. So. Well, the, the year I played in the Welsh school boys, um, we had a, quite a good team, um, we got to the finals of the European school boy championships and uh, we played against uh, Northern Ireland in the in the final. Um, unfortunately, there was a lad called uh, Norman Whiteside playing at that stage, and uh, he just bashed us about a bit, and uh, we couldn't cope with him. But uh, yeah, it was a good side. Uh, there was myself, there was uh, Clayton Blackmore and Mark Boyne, and uh, a few other players that have uh, played in lower leagues. Uh, so it was quite a good scene. The first time I met Mark was in, was a Welsh schoolboy trial, and uh, he brought. I think it was a man new tracksuit down to me. That wasn't a very good one either, was it? No, it was a, one of the old stock which they sent down to yeah. us. I thought he was quite good at the time, like, but I think that's the first time I met him. And uh, we played the, that year together in the schoolboys. I think it was 11 internationals. We had a competition, we got to the final of that. We beat England in our group, and yeah. I think we played Northern Ireland in the final. Mm. We won't mention the score. No. On the 1st of November 1980, Mark Hughes signed as a professional for Manchester United. To go from a small place like Robin uh, to go to a big club like United, it's obviously um, just a young lad and you first time away from your home and it's it's a, it's a big step but um, like a lot of people beforehand uh, they were saying well you should go and play for a smaller club and then, then you can always go up. But uh, even from smaller clubs you can go down so um, I always felt that uh, you have to start at the top and hopefully you can stay there because you're playing with better players and you need better facilities and uh, all around it's got to be better for your game then. My fears when he first went to Manchester were that he was just going to go <laughs> but um, I remember taking him and um, we met Joe Brown at the lodgings that he was going to be staying at and all seemed very nice and when I left Mark behind I remember saying to Joe Brown, he was the chief scout at United then, that um, you've got my most treasured possession there, you look after him, I remember saying that. <laughs> and well I was very sad coming home but that was on the Monday and I think on the Saturday Mark was back home for the weekend so it wasn't too bad. Yeah I, I think having a stable base uh, and um, mm -hmm. off the field uh, just keeps you relaxed and um, then you can just concentrate on, on your football um, because at an early age that's that's all you've got to think about really if, if you've got other distractions that outside the game well you're going to suffer um, you've got to be help, happy off the pitch or you don't perform on it as they say so um, uh, I was very lucky uh, because uh, a lot of the other, other apprentices uh, have had problems and uh, I was just very fortunate that I was able to spend uh, my formative years uh, at a place so, so warm and friendly as uh, Annie and Tommy's. When I first went there I was a midfield player and uh, and really uh, I, I was struggling at one stage and, uh, and it didn't look like uh, I would be making any progress whatsoever and I think it was just... Uh, the last uh, chance for me really that uh, 
a, a man who was the youth team coach there, Sid Owen, he, uh, he decided in his wisdom that uh, the only way I was going to get a game was by pushing me up front and uh, uh, he pushed me up front. I had a couple of games, scored a few goals and I stayed there ever since. I made my breakthrough um, when I was about uh, 1920, which um, I think probably is uh, a little bit late for, for most players. I think they usually uh, make a breakthrough a little bit earlier. But uh, when I was there, um, I was quite far back uh, in the queue for, for places, really. Uh, there was likes of um, Noel Whiteside had just broken through, um, people like Scott McGarvey, uh, Frank Stapleton. And about uh, Alan Brazil as well, so um, I was uh, I was way down uh, when I first got through. But uh, I think the like in most occasions when uh, young players break through, you get you get in the team uh, through injuries. And it was no different from myself. Uh, you have to be uh, playing well at at the right time when uh, possibly people aren't playing as well in the first team, and and you, they get a few injuries, and and then the management thinks uh, well he's worth a chance because he's doing reasonably well. And he was faced at the early age with a lot of failure, you know, which was frustrating for a lot of his ability. At the age of 18, 19, he hadn't quite broken through, which for a player of his ability, because he had that at 18, Mark should have been playing first team for somebody at 18, at 17 or 18. If you like, United kept the world from seeing what they saw at 19, 20. He got there because Ron Atkinson was running out of centre forwards. I, I think uh, the, the management uh, at that time, um, they felt uh, I didn't work uh, hard enough on my game, really. Um, I think possibly that's got something to do with uh, the, the style I've got. Is it looks a bit casual on the pitch, but uh, it's, I can assure you it's not. But uh, it's, it was just uh, in training. I wasn't a very good trainer in those days, and they, they felt, they felt uh, possibly uh, my attitude one is... Uh, as good as it could have been, but uh, I, I worked on that side of it and uh, it's a lot better now. My first full debut was against Oxford in the Milk Cup and uh, I, I was a late replacement for Arthur Graymore and uh, I ended up playing on the left wing. Uh, not, not my best position, I must admit, but uh, I was just happy to get in the team. And uh, uh, I didn't play particularly well, but um, I had uh, an opportunity, uh, I think it was in the first half, um, I think uh, Ray Wilkins enough to show a ball down the line to, to make it Duxbury who crossed it and uh, I got in the end of it and scored a goal. And Hughes came in and what a start for him. Ten minutes gone and Mark Hughes starting a first team match for the first time met the cross with a firm header and put Manchester United into the lead. Duxbury with good depth on the ball across. White side in the clean took other players away. Hughes came in yeah, I scored uh, on my full debut against Leicester at Old Trafford, which was uh, very special for me. Um, I was uh, very nervous before the game, actually. Um, I wasn't feeling too good, actually, uh, before I went out. So once I got on the pitch, I thought, well, perhaps this isn't going to happen for me. But uh, as soon as I got playing, uh, my nerves settled and I uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, I, think, uh, I think I scored with a header. Even after this dream start, Mark still had a struggle to establish himself in a star-studded United team. No, I, guess, uh, I think uh, deep down I'm still a shy lad and uh, I was never able to get that close to any of the players. But uh, once, once I started getting in the team, uh, the likes of Brian Robson and uh, Ray Wilkins, he, he was uh, very much uh, wanting me to do well and encouraged me, uh, encouraging me all the time when I was in the team. Well, Frank had uh, a bit of reputation as being a bit of a mourner and he still, he still got it actually. But uh, um, no, I think uh, I think the mistake I made was uh, that I thought it was just directed at me, but uh, it was just directed at everybody in general. I think and, uh, I've had a laugh and a joke about it with Frank since. But uh, um, I think as a young player and especially. Uh, uh, myself being a little bit insecure, I, I think I needed a little bit more encouragement and, and possibly Frank was uh, not the, the right type of player for uh, a player like myself just coming into the team.
in May 1984, after only four full first-team games for United, Mark was called up to play for Wales against England at Wrexham. Yeah, it was a special occasion for me personally because obviously it was my, my home around my Welsh debut and uh, to be playing against England is always a special game for any Welsh player and to, to be playing on my home hometown ground uh, for me personally though, it, was, it was just like a fairy tale really and uh, as the game went on uh, I got more into it and uh, I was able to score the goal which as it turned out to come to be the one and only uh, goal which helped us win the game obviously. In March 1985, Mark was voted the PFA's Young Player of the Year. For any PFA award is um, a great accolade, uh, but uh, I think as a young player, you're always a bit uncertain uh, how other people view you, uh, and certainly the management don't give you any clues how, how they feel towards you really. They're always trying to keep you down and, and keep your feet on the ground. So to have a, an award like that so early in my career was uh, just a great boost and uh, I was very, very proud. The 30th of April 1985, Wales 3, Spain 0 and probably Mark's most famous goal. Well, the goal came about, uh, if I remember rightly, um, I think we had a free kick, um, a good way out actually and uh, I'm not too sure enough, I think it might have been Peter Nicholas, he knocked a high ball into the far post. Uh, there was a bit of uh, argy bargy and, uh, at the time I, I felt uh, the referee had blown for a bit for a free kick or a penalty or, or something like that. So it's uh, a bit of an admission this. Uh, I thought uh, he he blown so I thought well the ball just bounced up, I thought I just hit it anyway. So because I thought it, it wouldn't have counted anyway but as it happens he hadn't, he hadn't blown the whistle and, uh, and it was 2-0 to us. Then, on May the 18th, United played Everton in an historic cup final. Well, I think for most players, uh, they, well, once they've been involved in a cup final, uh, you do try and remember everything at the time, but uh, it, it does tend to uh, dim as time goes on. Um, obviously, yeah, because uh, they're so well documented, uh, the incidents with uh, uh, Kevin, uh, get, Kevin Moran getting sent off and uh, Norman's goal obviously stick in my mind. Um, at the time, I think uh, we all felt it was very harsh, and uh, because of, through the passage, I mean, nothing's uh, changed to, to make me change my mind, really. But uh, as for the goal, I think um, it came uh, during the extra time, and we were all expecting Everton uh, to come on a lot stronger towards uh, the second part of the, at the time, but uh, it didn't happen. I think they were a little bit tired from their European cup exploits uh, during the week so um, uh, we, we just seem to be the stronger team and you usually find that uh, sometimes that when the team's down to 10 men it's usually quite difficult for the other team to break them down um, so if somebody uh, as for the goal somebody played the ball up to me um, I was able to turn and I saw Norman out wide and I, I knocked it out to him uh, and then I tried to get back and get in the box to get on the end of the cross uh, I was a bit upset that when he went for the goal at the time, but uh, looking back, I think uh, he made the right decision. I probably would have missed it. That's incredible! Unfortunately, in the next season, 85 86, things started to go wrong. Yeah, well, I um, had a few problems uh, that I was. Uh, drinking a little bit too much but uh, it wasn't as bad as uh, it was made out really. Um, the problem I had was that uh, I'd always enjoyed coming back to, to Raven and Rex and just uh, have a few drinks with all my old friends and whatever and that would, I just kept that till a Saturday and a Sunday really. But um, towards the end, just uh, before I was leaving uh, United, uh, I was going a lot out a lot more in, in Manchester you see so obviously uh, drinking during the week as well as uh, having a good good drink at the weekend uh, obviously was uh, having an effect on me when I was playing on the Saturday. I, I was spoken uh, to about it but um, it's been not as strong as uh, I needed really uh, because uh, a lot of times I thought I was just getting away with it uh, but obviously it was obvious to everybody else that, that I was uh, drinking a little bit too much over the weekend or whatever but uh, I, I never really was told in uh, no uncertain terms so I just let it drift on. Really. 
come on Saturday, I think most players will tell you that they get an impression how they're feeling when they first get on, out onto the pitch and uh, they do their first run uh, during the game. And uh, I was finding towards the, um, the end of the season that um, my first uh, three or four runs, I mean, there was, it just felt there was nothing there, you see. So obviously yeah, the whole of the game from that point on uh, was going to be a struggle because obviously you, you feel you're not right physically, so obviously your confidence goes down a little bit. And then you're not doing runs uh, that normally you would be doing because uh, you're trying to save yourself for the whole of the game, so um, it affects you that way. You've, You've got to realise that uh, that you're in a profession where you've got to look after yourself. If, if you don't, your performance is affected. So uh, uh, when I went to Barcelona, obviously I didn't have anyone there over with me to, to go out with. So obviously it stopped overnight. Really. Well, I wasn't really happy uh, off the pitch. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I wanted my future settled. Really, um, uh, I was I wasn't really able to uh, uh, get used to the idea of going to Barcelona. And deep down, possibly, uh, well, I know that really I wanted to stay here. I just wanted to have a good contract at United and be able to spend uh, the rest of my career there. But uh, things just drifted on, and uh, I ended up uh, signing for Barcelona. Uh, but unfortunately, I wasn't able to tell anybody for four or five months before I actually went, so that put a lot of extra pressure on me. And uh, being a young lad, I was only about 21, 22 then, and um, it just got a bit too much really. Because I was basically a shy lad, I'd never really got that close to the manager, or, uh, or the, obviously the chairman was uh, hired again, so I was never, I never felt I could just come out and say my piece really. And, uh, and because I was on a uh, um, low salary contract at that stage, um, they obviously felt that I was just going to see see my contract out, which uh, if I'd have told them that wasn't my intention, then possibly uh, things might have been different. Too. But I think it was just lack of communication and uh, myself letting things drift through. Uh, the fans were very good to me, actually. Um, towards the end, obviously, I think they were very disappointed because we did such a good start to the season. Everybody felt that, that that was the year that we were going to finally win the league, but uh, it didn't happen. and and. The run of bad form coincided with uh, uh, the time that I signed for Barcelona, so uh, they went too happy. But uh, I think possibly the, they blamed other people rather than myself, which, looking back, was a little bit unfair. But uh, it was it was just one of the things. And I, I think I've always had a good relationship with uh, with the United fans, and, and that's uh, that was one of the main reasons I wanted to come back because I, I wanted to, to do well for them. I didn't have a particularly good time on the, on the football field, I must admit, in Barcelona, but um, I think uh, the problem I had was that uh, over there, that I always felt that if, if I was playing reasonably well, uh, the goals would come along. Uh, I'd, I'd never really uh, bothered about actually going out and hunting for goals. I always felt that, as I said, if I played well, I would score goals. Um, but it just didn't happen for me out there. I played reasonably well, but I wasn't getting the goals. Uh, so obviously I was getting criticised off the field. Um, I had problems with referees as well. Um, uh, being a foreign player, obviously the spotlight was on me a little bit, so referees were aware of me. And obviously with the, the style I have got, uh, it did get me in trouble with referees over there. Uh, at, the end, at the end, I mean, um, because I was having to hold back, because uh, I was getting in trouble with the referee, and that was in turn getting my teammates in trouble because the referees were um, more likely to penalise um, Barcelona because of possibly the, the fact I was I was playing and the style I had uh, I had to I had to curb my aggression and uh, the style of play so I think as soon as I started doing that it's, I wasn't half the player that, uh, that they bought so uh, that's why I had the problem I think yeah I enjoyed playing alongside Gary um, he's, he's a very laid back character and he, he doesn't let anything uh, bother him if he if he misses a chance he always so he's got the attitude that he's, he's, he's going to get other chances to score, so uh, it never, never bothers him. Uh, I think uh, if I had his, a little bit of his attitude, uh, I'm not, not so much of a worrier, I think I think uh, possibly I would have done a little bit better over there. I think if, uh, I learned from Gary that, um, that you have to 
plays a lot of importance on actually getting in the box and getting on the end of things. And uh, before I actually uh, played with Gary, I never re realised the fact that well, sometimes you got to give up the the build-up play and just be a little bit selfish and just get in the box and try and get on the end of things. Yeah, uh, I enjoyed the time under Terry Venables. Um, I think he he was in a difficult situation with myself uh, because he he'd had a lot of problems with uh, the German. Bernd Schuster, so um, uh, he bought me and I was like a direct replacement, so obviously the press were having a go at me, because if, if they could have a go at me, eventually, it, uh, because I was Terry Venable's uh, signing, uh, it, it, it reflected on Terry as well, and ultimately reflected on, on the president, which uh, was what the press were after as well, because they didn't particularly like uh, Mr Nunes. So, uh, uh, it was a difficult situ situation for myself and for Terry Venables, but he, he gave me a fair crack of the whip. I had uh, 30 odd games for him, uh, I, and I didn't didn't do it myself justice. And at the end of the day, that's, I've got to hold my hands up. Uh, I was a little bit disappointed when uh, when he brought back Steve Archibald because at the time he gave me the impression that it was it was only going to be for a couple of weeks. But uh, obviously, uh, when they did bring him back, they, they had to cancel my registration. So. Uh, in effect, I was I was out for the rest of the season, and and I didn't play for them again. So I was a little bit disappointed about that. But at the time, I was just happy just to be out of the team. Really. Well, we went out during the first summer. He was there, and he was quite happy. And then we went and spent the new year with him. And he wasn't too bad then. But we went at Easter time, and he wasn't happy at all. I thought Mark will be here long. He'll be home, you know. And that's the way it turned out. Uh, at the time, I, uh, I wanted to come back to Old Trafford, but uh, unfortunately, um, uh, from a financial point of view, uh, really it didn't make sense because uh, I hadn't been out of the country for a full tax year, so I would have been liable to tax on, on my earnings uh, abroad. So for the sake of uh, four or five months, uh, really, I had to stay out of the country. So the opportunity to go by Munich came up, and uh, obviously they were a very big club. And it was a chance to start playing again, which was important to me. Uh, they were still involved in the European Cup as well, which was uh, something I'd never played in. So really, there was only one choice for it. Yeah, I was I was tempted to stay in Germany because um, I enjoyed the lifestyle there. Um, the football suited me a lot more than uh, Spanish football did. Um, it, I, I was uh, appreciated more for what I did. Uh, for the team and I wasn't just judged on my goals which was uh, a nice change really and, uh, and with my wife Jill was out there with me then and uh, she enjoyed it as well and uh, like if, if it hadn't been the fact that it was United that came in for me um, I've said many times I probably would have been playing for uh, by me for a couple more seasons than I actually did. Yeah, I was having a good time in Bayern Munich, but uh, Alex Ferguson had, had always uh, made his uh, feelings known that he, that he wanted to bring me back to Old Trafford, and uh, he came over a couple of times, uh, and his assistant, uh, Archie Knox, came over, and uh, obviously they, they made me feel very much wanted, and uh, at the end of the day, uh, because of the, the enthusiasm they had for, for my style of play, uh, it, it made me... Uh, Think, and think seriously about what I wanted to do and uh, at the end of the day there, there was no choice to make really, there was only one place I wanted to go. When I came back I had a lot of criticism um, for myself and Brian McLeod I had a lot of criticism because uh, we didn't score too many goals that year uh, and obviously the, the year before I came back uh, Brian had scored 30 odd goals which is a great tally really. Um, so obviously uh, fingers were pointed in my direction really, saying that uh, the reason Brian hasn't scored is because he's playing with me. Um, I think it was a little bit unfair because uh, within about uh, two, three months of the season starting, uh, uh, we lost about three wingers. We lost Jesper Olsen, he was sold, gone Strachan and uh, Peter Davenport who, was a, who did a good job for, 
for Brian uh, in the previous year. They, they'd all been sold within a matter of months, and uh, really we never replaced them until uh, Lee Sharp started to break through. Side is Hughes. There he is. There's his cross. I see. I think that sometimes people just have to oscillate away. It's, there's a certain magnetism between them. I suppose they get to build up a good relationship. I think that uh, Paul and myself and Sparky have had to probably adjust their games a little bit to suit each other. Possibly the team as well, because I think that over the last three years the team's evolved from, from the team I played in the first season. Sometimes partnerships um, can take time. They don't just happen overnight. Some do, but in the case of Mark and Brian, I feel there were some games that were excellent together. But um, I think that was a media thing more than it came from Old Trafford. It never, was never a, 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 a talking point in, in the coaches' room. It was never a discussion between me and the players. It was always down to the media's um, particular involvement in it. And of course they can distort and exaggerate things out of context. Well, it's been said that um, I'm difficult to be play with, but um, I'm, I'm a little uh, disappointed with that, that because uh, I, I feel that um, I, I do a lot of work for the team, uh, bring people into the game and knock, knock the ball off. And, and try and work out for the team. And, uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of uh, teams would rather have me playing with them than, than against them. Uh, it's just something that uh, the press have got on to and uh, obviously if they're stuck for something to say they can trot out the same story and uh, it keeps on coming back. I mean, uh, just as the, the thing about uh, the fact that myself and Brian can't play together um, this year because we score so many goals, uh, that's gone a little bit quiet. But uh, no doubt, if uh, we don't score as regularly again next year, uh, no doubt that we trot it out again. The things I remember of the final were obviously uh, scoring the two goals. Um, and in the first final, when I, when I played in '85 against Everton, I didn't really think I played very well, and I didn't really make much of a contribution, really. But uh, obviously, yeah, to, to score in a cup final is, I think, everybody's player's dream, and, uh, and I was able to score a couple of goals. And obviously, the the third one was uh, very important for us because uh, he kept us in the match. Really, I think he squeezed a little bit too hard. Um, the second goal, um, Danny Wallace uh, picked her up. Um, and it made a, made a good football, uh, but as I said, they came out tried to be a little bit too physical, and uh, it didn't work work for them. Um. The League Cup run um, was it was a great run, really, because we we played so many difficult uh, teams, and we we performed so well. Uh, against them, uh, that t when we got to the final, we, we were very disappointed in our performance because after doing so well in the previous rounds to get to the final and not to perform was very disappointing for ourselves and for the fans. Um, we played we played Liverpool at Old Trafford here and uh, um, we played them off the park really that night and we won 3 1. We went down to Arsenal and uh, we got probably the result of the season down there 6 2. And then uh, we have two very hard games against Leeds, and then uh, we, we turn out for the final and we just don't perform at all. And uh, I don't think anybody knows the reason behind it. Possibly we had our minds on on the European final. I don't know, but uh, we didn't perform and didn't do ourselves justice. Which, as I said, because of the teams and the quality of the teams that we'd beaten to to get there, it was made even doubly disappointing. The goal I scored against uh, Liverpool, um, I'd just been injured actually and uh, I was struggling a little bit because I had, unknown to me at the time, but uh, I was there to find out I'd uh, torn the muscles just above uh, my ankle. So uh, at the time I just went over to Jimmy Gregg and he strapped it up and just said, let's, let's see how it goes. So uh, I just went back on the pitch and as I happened uh, within a couple of minutes, uh, I picked up the ball just on the halfway line. And, uh, I ran forward, uh, and I think I was okay as long as I kept running in a straight line. If I tried to go left or right, I got a little bit of a pain, so I just ran forward, and then, and then chance me I'm going right, and uh, then I just whacked it. And uh, it's uh, Bruce Grogler at the time got a little bit of criticism because people felt possibly that he was too much off his line, but. Uh, 
if if they if they had a camera angle behind the goal, really, they, they would have seen that it did dip and it did go across him. So he, he wasn't to blame, really. He couldn't have stopped it if he wanted to, I don't think. Before the eventual triumph over Barcelona, Mark's reputation as a hard but fair player was brought into question by the sending off in the quarter-final against Montpellier. Yeah, the, the Montpellier game, um, I got a lot of press in, the, in that game because obviously the incident when the, when the lad got sent off. Um, uh, it was um, a little bit unfortunate, but I still think I, I did the right thing by uh, staying down. Uh, obviously, uh, maybe I stayed down a little bit too long, but uh, at the time, uh, I'd just come out of the tap and I was stepping over one of their players, and uh, I, I think uh, some of their players felt that I'd, I'd stamped on his fingers or something, which wasn't the case, but uh, about four or five of them started to rush over, and I thought, well, I'm going to be in trouble here if, uh, if I lift my hands or do anything, so I was like, well, concentrate on uh, getting involved here. Uh, so as, as they're coming over, uh, one's come from the left hand side, the lad, and uh, he's knocked me over. So I'm thinking, well, oh, I'm better off staying down on the floor. A lot of people said that the reason that he got sent off was uh, the fact that I, I was rolling about on the floor and I, I stayed down a little bit too long. But uh, in actual fact, uh, the referee was, was very close to the incident and uh, he'd, he'd probably sent off the, the lad before I'd even hit the deck really so I've, I've got no conscience about the incident at all. After successfully negotiating two potentially difficult ties against Ligia Warsaw in the semi-final, United met Barcelona in the Rotterdam Stadium in the final. The European Cup Winners Cup in, uh, in Rotterdam obviously is the, is the highlight of uh, my career so far. Um, uh, it, was, it was a great night all round. I mean our supporters made it a very special night for everybody and uh, I think uh, the strength and the, the emotion that they were showing, I think it upset uh, the Barcelona uh, team and, and their fans because they couldn't uh, understand the passion that they were showing. Um, on the night uh, when we came out, um, it wasn't a very nice evening really and it was a bit cold and uh, just as we came out there was a, a downpour which uh, I think uh, it put Barcelona off a bit. Uh, we, we were more than used to that kind of weather but uh, I looked at a few of their faces and, they, and you could see they were shaking a bit and they were thinking, well, I don't fancy this tonight. So uh, I think that gave everybody a boost and uh, we just went on there and uh, played them off the back really. Robbo Brown Robson just knocked a great ball in and uh, Pussy ran in and headed it. I'm uh, not sure what he headed with, his ear, his shoulder, his back of his head, I'm not sure, but uh, he was certainly going towards the goal. And, uh, I was just running in and making sure that really the goal should be credited to Steve, but um, uh, officially it's mine, but Steve takes a lot of credit for it, must not it? We knew that we could maybe get something off set pieces, and um, unfortunately, up, up until that point, um, the delivery, I mean, no disrespect on the lads, but uh, the delivery of the ball wasn't as what as what has been expected all season. And um, fortunately, uh, Pop floated one in there, and I managed to get my head on it somehow and I think I had it and hit my shoulder and that sort of took um, half of the half of the pace off it and as you say it, it might have gone in but Hughesy was doing what anybody else would have done and uh, I'm sure I would have done the same sort of thing just making sure and he, he stuck it in the back of the net Yeah the second goal um, one of their lads had it out wide on the, on the left I think it was and uh, he tried to cross I knocked it a bit wide and I think a lot of people felt I'd knocked it a little bit too wide but uh, at, at the time I just uh, had had it in my mind that I, I'd gone past the keeper, so it was just an open goal. So all I had to do was, from a technical point of view, I just knew that once I got past him, all I needed to do was just make a good t contact on the ball. But uh, since I've seen it uh, uh, at a later date, uh, I realised that I had to hit it with a lot of strength because uh, if I hadn't, and if I just tried to roll the ball in, uh, the two lads on the line would have cut it out and uh, wouldn't have been a goal, would it? He's received the, the PFA award uh, from your fellow professionals. It's obviously a great honour, um, 
and to receive it twice, I mean, is, um, that which nobody else has ever been given the award twice, was something very special. And I, I was a very proud man that night to, to, to stand up there and uh, to receive the accolades from my fellow professionals. It was a very proud night for me. I think the aggressive side of my game came out um, because I was fed up again, messed around really. Um, I w I'd get knocked about in training, and, uh, and like if if I knocked anybody over, uh, I'd say sorry. But unfortunately, nobody was doing that to me. So uh, one day, I just um, this one uh, player that was there, his name was Gary Worrell, and uh, and his, he had a certain style of, of playing that. Just, he was a left winger. I don't, I've got nothing against left wingers, honest, but uh, it was just that he had a uh, pattering sort of uh, running style, and uh, I don't know, he just, just uh, wind me up a bit. So I always felt like uh, kicking him if I could. So, uh, so unfortunately, he, he got a, a lot, a lot of the brunt of my aggression at that stage. But um, because of that, I think uh, the coaches saw a little bit of uh, a spark in me, and, uh, and from then I started making uh, progress. Well, I was a defender, and um, I wouldn't have liked to have played against Mark at all because he never stops. You know, he, he, he'll, he works it all the time, and also he doesn't lose his temper. He just keeps doing it and keeps working hard at it. It takes a lot of stick, um, and with them, with strikers like that, you, you don't know what to expect of them. You want them to react to you, which he doesn't. Yeah, well, both games I played against with the middles were. I've taught him since I've come come to United. Um, he gave me, I think he sort of introduced me in his uh, usual style when we played at Old Trafford. He called me a few times and I was thinking, right, well, hang about, hey, what's going on? You know, he's, he's not like your average big sort of six foot four centre forward who sort of catches you like. But um, he was certainly a handful that day. And then he came down to Erson Park and he started off in exactly the same mould. I think he clipped me about twice in the first five minutes, maybe a bit late or whatever. So uh, I remember it was only like about 10 minutes in the game, somebody played, one of the lads played the ball out of him and uh, I came through and I tried to just whack him back, like, but luckily Sparky saw I come and, uh, and jumped out of the way but he knew I'd went to, to give him a good clip and you know, um, and he laughs about it and I laugh about it now and um, I'm just glad he's on my side now, yeah. yeah. Well, he's aggressive on the pitch, he's not off the pitch. Nothing. Yeah. Very quiet. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's got, that, he's got that type of physique and presence that when people maybe have a goal kicking him, it, it takes a lot to hurt him. I mean, he's very rarely injured. So it does take quite a bit to get to. I'd rather have him in my team than against my team. Uh, as I said, he's looked after me a couple of times. He's saw that a couple of the full-backs have tried niggling at me and he's, he's come flying over at him sort of thing. So he looks after me in that way. My style of play has got a lot of criticism because of the, the aggression uh, that I do show. But I think... Um, uh, that's from when I first got in, uh, in the team. Uh, when I first started out, uh, I used to say things a little bit too personally. If it's somebody kicked me, uh, I'd think oh, uh, that's something against myself, so I'd have to get them back. Um, but as I've got older, I realise well, it's just all part of the game. Uh, uh, I think I, I channel my aggression a lot better than I, than I did when I first got in the team. And uh, I, th I think I get a lot more respect from other players now. Uh, I think when I when I first got on the team, uh, they think, oh, well, we know we can wind him up and uh, get him involved and get him in trouble with referees. Whereas now, uh, I think they know that they can't do that to me anymore. I don't know. <laughs> he doesn't get it from me. He doesn't get his aggression from me at all. I don't know, really. It's... I think you've got to be aggressive to be a professional footballer these days. Yeah, I, I get remembered for spectacular scissor kick, really, because uh, from from the Spanish game when, when I scored at Wrexham, and, uh, and I, I've done it a couple of times since. Um, it is something I've worked on, because uh, I think I feel more comfortable in the school rather than heading for it. I think I get more direction and more power. I'm actually doing a bicycle kick rather than uh, heading the ball. Uh, some players, uh, their strength is heading ones. Uh, scissors kick and uh, it is something I, I practice in training and uh, I think uh, that it's, it's a skill that you do have to hone and uh, make sure that uh, you're confident in it because obviously it can 
make you look a bit of a fool if it doesn't come out. He's got a, an eye for that. He's, he looks volley in the ball. If he could maybe play, so he, would, he was still probably trying to volley and go for the spectacular, which sometimes people, you know, maybe say the fault of his, but he scores that many spectacular volleys. Then um, I think that probably outweighs the ones he misses, you know. I think that that's what he's noted for. He's an excellent baller of the ball, and if he sees a chance, he'll have a go at it. Sometimes it goes and it's set for them, but more often not, he gets it on target. Yeah, I've been criticised for not scoring for end goals, and I think it is possibly is a fair comment. But um, I think I have a lot more to my game, and uh, I do. I get involved a lot more in the build of the play, and uh, sometimes that that leaves me a, a bit uh, isolated from, from the box, and sometimes I can't get on the end of things when possibly people have shots, and, and I should be in positions where I just knock in the rebounds and off goalkeepers. Um, Usually I've been involved in the builder play and I've and I got in those positions. Um, I think it's a special skill in itself and I think uh, you can work on it to a certain extent but really it's it's something that you're born with and uh, uh, I'm, I'm more uh, the type who likes long shots and uh, as you said volleys and it's, it's something that uh, I'm not particularly adept at but uh, I'm working on it. However spectacular his achievements on the football pitch, Mark is anything but a superstar away from Old Trafford. That's the type of lad Mark is. I mean, uh, he's quiet and unassuming sort of lad uh, off the pitch. And, uh, when he goes onto the pitch, he turns into something else and um, he channels all his aggression in the right way. And uh, uh, he's a smashing lad and uh, only somebody like him would do that sort of thing. Dick, for instance, when, when he first started in the first team, He'd come home on a Saturday night. We were going out to Wrexham to the nightclubs. It'd be a case of, how'd you get on today? We won 2 0, scored 2. And that was it. Forget about the football then. It was have a drink and all the lads together talk about anything. It wasn't as if it, he was the, the big superstar, it was all the lads together sort of thing. Good uh, set. When he played for Wales from the 15s, he was eligible to sign a schoolboy form for Manchester United. Dave Sexton was the manager at the time. Dave invited them into his office and he said to Mark, well, are you going to sign a schoolboy form for Manchester United? And Mark Hughes said no. So the following evening I went over to Ruaben and Mark was home. He said, well, did you enjoy yourself last night? Great, Mr. Robertson. I said, well, why didn't you sign, Mark? I wanted to sign for you, Mr. Roberts. Well, I think Mark Hughes is a very special player. Mark Hughes is also a very, very special person. Success hasn't changed, Mark, at all. He's still exactly the same as he, he was. He comes in the house, hi, Mum, and that's how he's always been, and he's never changed. I hope he doesn't. Lots of people ask me where, where it comes from, the nickname Sparky, but I, I can't really put my finger on it. I think um, it's because it's so long ago, I think it was possibly something to do with uh, Sparky Sparky, uh, because uh, I'm not the sparkiest of uh, players uh, or persons, really. But uh, uh, another thing, I think we all had to be names of comics. If somebody was called Beano, somebody was called Dandy, I was called Sparky, so I don't know, something. A mixture of both of them. One thing I do know that. Uh, 